goal of this tutorial is to help you get started making decisions for quarter one. The typical response as someone starts to work with the Micromatic simulation is, what do I do now? I am overwhelmed and I am just totally confused. Let's see if I can reduce your anxiety. First, if you have not yet determined your company mission, you need to do that now. Before you can make any decisions for quarter one, you need to decide what kind of product your company will provide its customers and what strategy you will implement to fulfill your mission successfully. For example, do you intend for your company to provide its customers with a high quality product at a higher price in order to pay for the cost of that increased quality? Or do you want to provide a low price product investing less in quality in order to keep your price as low as possible? Of course, there are multiple variations to these two dichotomous positions. The point is that you must determine this before you can begin making your quarter one decisions. Let's do a walkthrough of things to consider when entering decisions for quarter one so you can see how this all plays out. Displayed on your monitor is a micromatic map. As it indicates, the decisions you make regarding marketing and operations flow through reports that impact your financial decisions and reports. Where to start? At this stage of the simulation, it is easiest to start with my marketing decisions. However, that might not always be the case. Later, it may make more sense to start with my production decisions, but for quarter one, I will start with marketing. I will open up the marketing decisions panel. And you can now see all the marketing decisions you will make in order to promote your product to your customers. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume our company has decided to pursue a Lexus type strategy. That is, I want to provide our customers with a high quality product, but not so high in quality as to be seen as the Rolls Royce of the industry. And I do not want to be viewed as a Ford type of product either. Nothing against Ford, but that is not our targeted position within our industry. A quick clarification. The default entries you see in the marketing panel are those that were made in quarter zero, and they are the same for all companies in your industry. So the zeros you see for the quality decision means that neither your competitors nor your company invested in quality in quarter zero. Of course, in quarter one, all companies are free to pursue strategies of their own choosing, so their marketing decisions will undoubtedly change just as mine will. Since I have decided to pursue a higher end position in quality in the market, I will start with our quality decision. Since I want to be at the higher end for quality for companies in our industry, but not necessarily the company with the highest quality, let's start with an entry for quality of $5. If I think that our customer's sensitivity to quality is different in each territory, I can vary the quality of our product in each of the three sales territories. But, to simplify this tutorial, I treated all three sales regions the same. At this point, it is important to note that the quality entry I just made impacts both the image of the product in the marketplace and the cost of producing that product. Since I just increased the quality of our product and, as a consequence, its cost, I should make an adjustment in our price so that I can be profitable. How much I adjust our price depends on how much of the increase in quality cost I wish to cover and the volume of sales I wish to achieve. All that depends on our view of how much the potential customers are willing to pay for increased quality. For this tutorial, I will adjust the price from $70 to $74 in all three areas. Next, I need to consider how much I want to invest in features development. As stated in the manual, spending on this affects whether features will be added to the product in the future. How many features you end up with is dependent on accumulated total spending on features development. Since I see added features as part of our Lexus image, let's add 5,000 for this entry. Now I need to decide how I will promote our product to our customers. Our price quality mix creates an image of the value of the product, but I need to decide how I will make our customer aware of that price quality image. I have local newspaper and trade publication ads, plus web marketing, as ways in which to push our product to the consumer. In order to keep this tutorial simple, I'm going to leave the newspaper and trade publication ads I have done in regions 1 and 2 the same, but I will add some newspaper and trade publication advertising to region 3. Now I am going to make an entry for web marketing. I've decided that I want to promote our product really heavily on the internet. Next, you can see that I can pick an ad message. 
As the manual describes, if our ad message is consistent with our position in the industry, I will get extra sales. For example, I am going to pick quality as our ad message in all three areas. I have chosen to make quality the ad message in all three areas, given our focus on quality for the product that we're going to sell to our customers. On the right side of the marketing decisions panel, you can see that I also have sales reps. I can choose to hire more sales reps, fire sales reps, pay them a commission, and or move them from one region to another. For simplicity reasons for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave those as they are, except that I will hire two reps in Region 3. Before I finish with this marketing decisions panel, I need to make our sales forecast decisions. What I enter will be our best estimate of the number of units I will sell given our marketing efforts. This entry should be how many units I realistically believe I will sell, not how many I hope I will sell. Wishful thinking does not mean it will happen. Forecasting will be challenging in the first few quarters because of your lack of experience with the game and the absence of history on the part of your competitors' actions. The good news is that all your competitors face this same challenge. Before making my sales forecast, I need to have some idea of the overall industry demand for the product I am selling. Fortunately, in quarter zero, the company bought market research for the expected industry demand for quarter one. To find out what that demand is, I need to go to the marketing research report. There are two ways that I can access that report. One is to select the marketing menu and then the marketing research report option. The other is to use the Micromatic map. I am going to demonstrate how to open that report using the Micromatic map. To do this, I will click on the icon for that map. And then once that map opens, I will choose the marketing research report. The marketing research report shows that in quarter zero, we purchased information on the average expected demand for quarter one. When you look at the average expected demand for the three regions, do not assume that this is the number of units that you are certain to sell in a particular quarter, in this case quarter one. That is not what those numbers indicate. The average expected demand numbers shown in the report are what a company will sell in quarter one if the total industry demand was split equally among all companies in the industry. These numbers are not a guarantee of what you will sell. If your competitors outpromote you with some combination of price, quality, sales reps, and advertising, your sales will be less than the average expected demand shown. The best way to look at these numbers is to think, if my marketing efforts are comparable to my competitors in the industry, I should sell close to that number. If I want to sell more than that number, I need to have a marketing effort that is better than at least some of my competitors so that I can steal some of their market share. Another way to look at these numbers is to say that if your company strategy is to target the premium segment of the market, then your goal is not to sell as many units as your competition. In this case, your sales target would be to sell less than the number shown given the premium pricing of your products. Now that I have an idea of the industry demand in quarter one, I am ready to make my sales forecast for the quarter based on this demand and my planned marketing efforts. Given my price, quality, and promotional efforts, I am going to enter sales forecasts for the three sales regions as 6,000, 5,000, and 3,000. Before I finalize my marketing decisions, I want to think about what kind of marketing research I want to purchase. Let's take a look at what your options are. I can see that I have a number of marketing research decisions I can make. Given my focus on product quality for quarter one, I am going to select that market research option. As you make your marketing research decisions, particularly for quarter one, you want to be able to gain some insight into why the results of your quarter one decisions did not turn out as you had planned. It is less important if you sell more than you forecasted or less than you forecasted, but that you have some idea of why these sales occurred. So you want to buy marketing research that will help you to explain why you sold what you did. This insight will allow you to make better decisions in the future. If you have no idea why you sold 2,000 units instead of your forecasted 5,000 units, or 7,000 units instead of 5,000 units, then you'll have no idea of what changes to make in the next quarter. So think about which marketing research will help you to answer the question of what caused the difference between actual sales and forecasted sales. This completes the tutorial for making your marketing decisions for quarter one. Next, you should view the tutorial for making your operations and finance decisions for quarter one.